Hi, my name is Hazem Gaber, and today we're going to look at the standard for project management. So we're in the seventh edition, and this is put out by the Project Management Institute. So every time they begin a new edition on the standard for project management and the PMBOK or project management body of knowledge, they take a look at global perspectives on changes in project management and they try to understand how to realize benefits and value from project outputs. So it's been about three years since the last edition came out and now some organizations have ceased to exist. Some new organizations have emerged. There's been older technologies that have reached the end of their life. And there's been new technologies with new capabilities. And people have advanced their thinking, skills, and capabilities. And people have developed new techniques and skills, business acumen, and contributions. And so there are some fundamental concepts that stay, but there's some new ideas that we need to look at. Projects are a vehicle for delivering value in an organization, and that has been the case for a long time. <coughs> so the sixth edition was under the development quite a while and now we have the seventh edition so there's been a lot of new stakeholders and their feedback has helped maintain and enhance the credibility of the guide and improve its usefulness and it's also helped keep it relevant it's been around since 1987 so it's almost it's actually 24 we're 2024 so, so it's almost 40 years old now. So the 1996 edition was distinguished as a guide to the body of knowledge rather than the project management body of knowledge. But it definitely exceeded expectations. The sixth edition was the first edition that separated between the ANSI or American National Standards Institute standard and the guide, and it incorporated agile content into the text. It also expanded knowledge area material, including concepts, trends, and emerging practices. So let's take a look at some of the changes to the seventh edition. So we've got uh, one thing that we've really changed is we've changed from processes to principles. What that means is that, whoops. So we've changed from processes to principles. And what that means is that um, in the past, uh, there was a process, there was a routine, there was a set of steps you had to take to get an outcome. But now, since processes are changing so fast, we can't really give a full value to the process. So instead, we're gonna focus on the principles that those processes were developed from. We've also got a new global team of subject matter experts. And then having said that, our processes are still there in the background. So processes are still great, but they're not necessarily um, the foundation of our knowledge anymore. We've also got a new understanding for value delivery. So we know what the project is going to deliver. And then we've got eight project performance domains that work together. We're going to learn about those. So the eight domains are key principles that make a project successful. We've also 
that new models, methods, and artifacts. And PMI or Project Management Institute has now a lot of digital content. So, one of the things that I should mention is that there's a, now a global community of practitioners that have put millions of hours into developing the system. And the community has is very happy with the idea of switching from processes to principles. And that has had a tremendous effect on the management of projects in many different industries. It's also um, consistent with the changes to the PIM block starting from the third and fourth editions. So what I want to say is that we've got a, a lot of content we need to cover and I'm going to look at it in more detail now. So let's take a look, let's jump into some definitions here so we can understand, so we can build a framework for what we're going to cover. And the first definition is an outcome. So an outcome is an end result or consequence of a process or project. It can also include outputs of artifacts. So a, a single project can have um, multiple outputs. And it can also, the outcome can also have a broader intent. So the outcome is saying, what is our project going to deliver? So are we, it could be a construction of a new office building, a new product, um, a new business process, a book, something like that. And then we've also got a portfolio. So a portfolio is a bunch, I should have mentioned programs. Basically, we have a project. And several projects that share resources can be called a, and we'll learn about this, they can be called a program. And then several uh, programs and projects all together can be called a portfolio. Uh, a project doesn't have to be part of a program. So we can have... So the portfolio is what delivers the strategy of the organization. And we can have sub-portfolios. So projects, programs, portfolios, and operations that are managed as a group, and they achieve the organization's strategic objectives make up a portfolio. Now, a product is an artifact. Don't think of an artifact like a dinosaur bone, but an artifact is something that we can produce and we can quantify. And it can be the end result or it can be a component. So if we're developing, let's say, a new toothbrush, the new toothbrush design could be the artifact, a box, a packaging, could be an artifact, I mean a product. Um, the marketing plan for the toothbrush could be a product. So you know, you, products are not limited to, um, they're not limited to tangible objects is what I want to say. You can have a product that is a, is, um, let's say a business process that's all documented. It could be completely digital. It could be a website. But it's something that we can measure. That's a bottom line. Can we measure this? Can we say, hey, we did what the project expected us to do? If the answer is yes, then we got a product. And then we've got programs. So several projects that are related can be considered a program. As long as they're uh, managed in a way to obtain benefits that are not available from managing them individually. So if I'm building 
uh, let's say, 10 condo towers, and I'm using the same engineer and the same uh, vendors and the same um, layouts and floor plans, and I'm, I'm buying, say, toilets from the same place. Each condo complex can be considered a separate project, but if I manage them all together, I can save a lot of time and money, and that becomes a program. And then a project. This is the most important. This is what we're here for. So a project is a temporary endeavor, and we have to be very clear about that. It's temporary. It doesn't last forever. Otherwise, it's not a project anymore. It becomes an operation. And it is designed to create a unique product, service, or result. There's a beginning, and there's an end. And a project can have multiple phases. And like we said, a project can be a loan, or it can be part of a program, or a portfolio. So project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities that meet the requirements. And it refers to guiding the project work to deliver the intended outcomes. So a project team can achieve the outcomes using a broad range of approaches that we're going to learn about later. The project manager is the person assigned by the organization. We're going to learn about organizations to lead the project team that is responsible for achieving the project's objectives. So the PM does a lot of different things. The most important is they communicate. Now we also have pro program managers. We have portfolio managers. You do enough project management, you become, you can get the PGMP, and if you do a portfolio management, you get the PFMP. So a project team are a set of people who perform the work of the project, and their leader is the project manager. And then a system for value delivery. So this is part of what we have now uh, in the new PMBOK, which is the collection of business activities that build, sustain, and advance the organization. And portfolios, programs, projects, products, and operations can all be part of an organization system for value delivery. So one of the things in an organization, let's say we have a toothbrush factory, is we have operations and operations makes toothbrushes they make stuff so they're like the marketing the factory managers workers shipping sales and then on this side we got the the project managers who design new products. So they make a toothbrush. So there's a cycle here. So sales might say, hey, the customers want some new toothbrush design and they want new features. They're, they're asking blah, 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 blah. And then the project management team puts together the CEO the CEO says, well, how can we improve sales? Well, they want a new design. Oops. They want a new design. So how do they make a new design? So now we put together a project team. And the team comes up with a design. And then that goes back to the factory. So now the factory starts making a new design. And now we have a cycle. And so this whole system is designed to be part of delivering the value because if we didn't have a project team 
then the operations would be stuck making the same product and eventually we'd go broke. And if we didn't have an operations team, then we wouldn't be making anything, so there'd be no point for having a project team. And then now we have value. So what is value? Value is a worth or the importance or usefulness of something. So uh, we can perceive value in different ways depending on who who we are. So it's the, we learn about stakeholders. And so the customers define value as their ability to use the features or functions of a product. So what did we make? Did we make what the customer asked us to make? Um, then we, if we did, then we've delivered value. If we didn't, then we didn't deliver any value. And then an organization, however, looks at business value. So how much money are we making? So profit, it could be, it could be, you know, there's different financial metrics that we're going to learn. So there's profit and there's um, expenses. Did we reduce expenses? There's also revenue. Because we can, you can make a lot of money top line. So I could be a, I could be a business that makes a million dollars a year. I spend nine hundred thousand. I'm left with a hundred thousand dollars in profit. So I could do one or two things. I can I can make a project that increases my revenue. So let's say I made now two million. I spent one point eight million. So or I could could do I could focus on trying to cut my costs so I could still make, bring in a million dollars in revenue but I say I only spent seven hundred thousand so now I made three hundred thousand now which one's better I don't know I mean it depends really so you can always you can always scale up and then cut your expenses a lot of sometimes you scale up, you 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 get more efficient. So this is not necessarily going to grow in the same proportion. But but yeah, there's different things. And then we've got societal value. So that can include can we contribute to people, communities, or the environment. And then finally, we've got the audience. So who? Who needs a project? And the answer is actually everybody. Because the project management body of knowledge applies to everybody who's involved in the project. We call those people stakeholders. People have a stake in what we're doing. And that includes uh, consultants, educators, the students, the project sponsors, the vendors, anybody who is accountable for the outcome of the project, anybody who works on the project, anybody who works in the project management office, so they lend their support to the projects of the organization indirectly, anybody who is a project sponsor, product owner, product manager, executive leadership, or project governance. So it's always in a in a business a project sponsor. So sponsor is the guy who says, "Hey, this is a great idea." And so the project sponsorship could come from anywhere. So if we're making a toothbrush, project sponsor could be like the head of sales, or a CEO, or a financial guy, somebody who says, "Hey, this is something we need to do," and he's putting his his job on the line basically so to his his reputation and his career are linked to the success of the of the project also got anybody that provides resources for project work anybody who's involved with the portfolio or program that the project's in anybody who 
uh, delivers value. Anybody who's teaching or studying about the project or anybody who's involved in any aspect of the project value delivery chain. So projects can exist, they do exist within an organization. And an organization can be anything. So it can be um, a government agency, contractual arrangement, a joint venture. It doesn't really matter. The point is that projects create value. And they create value in several different ways. So we can create value by creating a new product, a new service, or a new result that meets the needs of customers or end users by creating positive social or environmental contributions, improving efficiency, productivity, effectiveness, or responsiveness, enabling changes to facilitate organizational transition to its desired future state. So we might have an organization that's got an HR problem or they've got an environmental problem or it's got a staffing problem and we, we're putting together a business plan so we can transition. So let's say we're gonna, we're gonna go from like losing money or workers or polluting to not doing any of those things. So now we've got a transition. Also, it sustains benefits that were enabled by previous projects or programs or business operations. So we might have already done a project and now we need to maintain it in some way. So there's several different components that deliver the value in the organization. What we call them are, as we said earlier, we've got a project, which is a project, and then we've got the program, which is a bunch of projects that are managed together. And then we've got the portfolio, which is a whole bunch of projects and programs. And that results in a product. And all of this product and stuff ends up with operations. So any program or, or project can also have products. An organization, the operations department will support the projects. It also supports the business functions like payroll, supply chain, all that good stuff. So here we see an organization and we've got a few examples. So on the left, we've got a whole bunch of projects that are in one program. So there's also is managing some projects and then these are all part of the portfolio. And then on this side, we've got a whole bunch of projects that are not part of a program they're managed independently and we've also got a program those are part of a portfolio and then here we've got a program and we've got some standalone projects that are not part of a portfolio these all these items deliver value to the organization and then the system for value delivery part of the internal environment in the organization and then we've got the external environment. We're going to learn how these things affect our business. So one of the things that we should think about is what we call information flow because when we're delivering value we've got information going back and forth. So the way it works is we start here, we can start anywhere, but we're going to start here with our senior leadership. So this is the CEO. So 
the CEO of the company sets the strategy and he says, this is what the organization needs to do. We need to make money. We need to increase our market share, etc., etc., etc. And that strategy gets delivered to the portfolios, which are, let's say, um, let's say we're Colgate. So we got a portfolio that makes toothpaste, a portfolio that makes toothbrushes, etc. And those people in the portfolio, they take the strategy and they tw they dwindle it down into like into smaller tasks. So they say, what do we want to achieve? You know, we want a billion dollars in sales this quarter, for example. And that that could be our outcome. Or we want to reduce packaging waste by fifty percent. That could be another outcome that's uh, geared to the environment. And so they send that to their program and project managers, and those people come up with specific deliverables. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to come up with a packaging design that uses 50% of the material as the old one. And that, or we're going to design a new toothbrush. And that goes to the operations. So the factory, so now the factory is making a new idea that the project delivered. So remember there's a deliverable here and the deliverable could be the design, which now we're making. And so the operations gets the design. And they, and this could be factory people. It can also be sales. It can also be marketing. They try this thing out, and if they think it's and if it's great, then outcome goes back to the CEO, and the CEO gets a raise. And if it's not so great, and it's not always great, but then operations delivers their feedback. Hey, fix this, change this, do this. And that goes back to the project team, and then the project team can refine deliverable and they can send it back. So this is actually a cycle that goes this way. But then they can say, hey, this isn't fitting with the with the desired outcome. Maybe we want to do something a little bit better. So then the project team can say, this is what we did and this is what we still need to do. And they send that back to the portfolio manager, the portfolio manager can, can refine the outcome to send that back to the project team. So that flows that way. And then the portfolio team can also say, uh, take the feedback we got from the project, and figure out, have we met the strategy that the CEO set? Yes or no? Have we met it? Have we exceeded it? Is he thinking, uh, is he unrealistic? Do we want to change the strategy? The senior leadership, the CEO, can look at what operations did, what feedback he's got from the portfolio team, and then he can change the strategy. So now we've got a circle here. So information has to flow. Now, if we don't have a flow of information somewhere, if the communication breaks down, then nothing gets done correctly. So it's uh, very important that everybody is communicating. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Can't say it enough. So the way that projects happen is through governance. The governance and an organization delivers the value. If there's no governance, then nobody knows what's going on. The governance framework has control, it has oversight, it has integration, it has decision-making, and it has value assessment. So you can figure out if 
what people are doing is actually working. And there has to be, it has to be smooth. It has to be able to manage issues. It has to have a decider. There has to be somebody with authority who can do changes, who can make decisions. If you can't make decisions, then you can't deliver anything. We're going to learn more about that in the next video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thank you.